again beautifully. A lot warmer last night than it has been and there's not been much of a breeze although it's just picked up but look over there. See them two white things over there? Them are meat bags and they are full which means last night at about half past five Uncle Ian pulled it off and downed a moose right up there. It is packing out day one of Ian's favourites, so I hope he enjoys it and we're going to be boning, packing pretty much all day. Last night we got back about half past nine, so it was a late night and we just managed to get tea down as next before we hit the sack. Yeah, we've accomplished what we came to accomplish, which is absolutely fantastic. Two guys self-guiding out here in the last frontier. We best crack on and get this moose in bags and get him back here for the plane to pick it up. I'm not saying this is the right way or the wrong way to sharpen your knife, but this is the way I do it on a, on a stone like this. I'm pushing it five ways on the blade going one way. Now turn it round and push it back the other way. So I'm doing both sides. Because Ian shot a lovely moose and we've got to get all that meat and skin off it. Although we've been gazing at this terrain for over a week now, we take time to carefully plan the most advantageous route to the bull. It's tough going and we don't want to waste any precious energy. Once we make it to the river, we know the trail is cut ready. However, it's all uphill from here and there's plenty of roots and branches to claw at your heels. Once at the top, I load my rifle as a precaution. We know there's a grizzly in this area and there's a chance it could already be feeding on the carcass. But with the stage clear, Wildy straps on his blades and gets down to business. Here's the point where I feel like a bit of a spare part. Steve is a maestro with his knives and it really is a pleasure to watch him work. Every day in the field is a learning day and Steve takes time to explain the butchery process whilst planning the cuts he'll be loading into each pack. There are strict rules regarding how meat should be harvested in Alaska. All meat should be stripped from the bone and extracted. Nothing is left to waste. It's also significantly easier to pack out meat in large joints rather than smaller cuts. This way the meat doesn't tend to shift around in the packs as you're walking. The fabric meat bags allow the meat to breathe, but we line our packs with heavy duty contractor bags for the trip down the mountain. This saves me from being covered in blood and stinking like an abattoir and becoming a mosquito magnet for the remainder of our trip. Strapping the load as tightly as possible is essential. If the load shifts unexpectedly whilst on uneven ground, I could go down heavily, potentially breaking a leg or worse. And now I'm on my way. This is my time to shine. While Steve also enjoys the highly rewarding feeling you get from physically carrying out an animal you've harvested and butchered, he still thinks it's a little strange that I enjoy this part so much. But it is this visceral and emotional connection with the fallen animal that is so important to me. It's a mark of respect for our quarry and a recognition of its sacrifice so that others may benefit from the harvest. The journey down to the river has been tough enough, but now it's uphill all the way back to camp. My thighs are burning and I gasp for air. It's all about putting one foot in front of the other.
So there's the first load out today. That's last night, so it was two loads, about 50 pound each. Now today I brought out a whole front quarter. That's about 80 pounds. Steve's really good with his knife work, managed to get it nice and tight off the bone. You've got to take everything from the animal down to its knee bone. Unfortunately, I shot it through the neck, so most of that meat is all blown. But Steve's back up there doing the rest of the knife work. Uh, trying to get it into four even packs hopefully they'll be about 50 to 60 pounds it's good to get this one out of the way it's nice and heavy i like it when the packs get lighter as it gets later it's taking about an hour and 45 minute round trip so with a bit of loading at the top there it's about two hours now cole's asked when he's going to come out and pick the meat up he wants to do it tonight before it spoils because it has been quite bright and i've said between 6 30 and 7. we might get it done sooner it all depends on how wild he's been doing with his knife work ideally if we can both do two more trips that will break the back of it and go back and get the rack tomorrow that's one of the things about moose hunting now, particularly when you shoot one right up there in the mountains you've got to think about how much work and effort it is to get it back now last year when we came out there was four of us packing and we did the job pretty quickly in less than a day but obviously with just two of us and with wildy mainly doing the knife work a lot of the legwork you know lays with me so just think about it before you go out there moose hunting squeezing the trigger is the easy part the hard work comes afterward Steve's make great progress by the time I arrive back, having completely stripped the bull, split the meat into manageable loads, and is busy with the final job of cleaning off the skull. get loaded up with another pack and get ready to head back to camp to start preparing lunch. Steve will follow on shortly once he's finished cleaning the skull. Alaskan sausage. Last trip.
So there we have it, the end of day 10. Pretty epic day. It's been a bit of a hard work, hasn't it, today, but well yeah. worth it in the end. Very rewarding. So Team Awesome rides again. Of course, got the ball down yesterday. Steve got a couple of packs out for us to bring down rear quarter. So got up there first thing this morning. Uh, Steve did knife work while I brought out front quarter. And then it's worked really well. So got up there, we both brought a pack down, had a bit of lunch, went back up there for the final pack. You know, it's a great bull, not the biggest that's out there. We've seen an even bigger one. And on the footage, we can see just how small this is in comparison. It's been a bit of work getting him out. It's been hard work. It's been rewarding work though, hasn't it? I know you love moose hunting deep down. Deep down, I absolutely love it. it. I don't want to see another moose for at least 12 months, but I absolutely love it. <laughs> yeah, so all I can say is thanks ever so much, mate. Mate, it's been, been a pleasure honor. working been an with you doing it. This country really does make you work for your animals. Not only spotting them, getting in to take a shot, as you saw yesterday, you know, it's a pretty epic stalk in there, right up the way, across the top of the mountain, through a ravine and through thick alders and willows. And, and the reward is then to get a shot on this guy. And then the realization hits you, bugger. <laughs> yeah. I've got all this work to do to get yeah. him back down again. As soon as I seen him throw his head in the air, I thought, that's the next two days of pain. Yeah, I know, because while he was down there, kind of with his head behind his, enjoying the sunshine. Rain's coming in now, so we time this absolutely to perfection. We think Cole's going to come in a little bit later and he's going to pick up the meat and fly it out, so yeah. make sure it, nothing's spoiled. And then I'm going to cook dinner again. Yeah. So it's, it's been a great day. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Yeah, it's been an awesome day. It's been an awesome trip, hasn't it, really? Can you believe we've done 10 days hunting in Alaska and not got wet? No, we have been very, very lucky with the weather. Last year, it was raining all the time. The weather was pretty terrible. This time, we've had it pretty much bang off. But it's been a real pleasure working with you. There's only been two of us been self-guided so you're not really sure what's going to happen when you're self-guiding whether you're going to be able to make the shots or choose the right routes would appear that we've we've done okay we're not too shabby at this no, job mate we've got we're to carry down we've got a moose down as well we've done what we came to do haven't we and i best cook dinner so thanks again mate you're welcome and see no you in the cook it's late in the day by the time cole arrives to collect the bull he's a workaholic with an insane schedule ferrying hunters and their trophies across the region this is just one of many stops today. But his real success lies in getting hunters to the ideal location for their chosen hunts, whether that be moose, caribou, bear or dull sheep. Of course, you must be well prepared, but his client's healthy rate of success speaks for itself. Whilst I'll be taking home the antlers, I've donated the meat from both of my bulls to a local family in need. Moose meat is a vital source of protein in this region, and I'm glad to be able to do my part to support those who don't have the opportunity to hunt themselves. The regulatory system that controls hunting and harvesting of big game here in Alaska is the most sophisticated I've experienced anywhere in the world. It delivers a successful, sustainable management program that will ensure thriving populations of game for generations to come. And with that, our hunt is nearly at an end. This is our last night in paradise. <laughs>